Mute. Okay. So good to see everyone. So we have uh, a lot of things we're going to get through today. Just want to check in about what areas you would like to work on. So how about neck and shoulders? Raise the hands if you have neck and shoulders you like to work. Okay, we will definitely get to neck and shoulders. And how about the mid back area? Anybody experience? Yeah, okay. And then how about lower back? Yeah, that one's usually the winner. I got two hands out when we did a lot of lower back work yesterday. So hopefully things are feeling good, but we'll get back into that lower back. And then hips, hips and low back tend to go together. So once we get the hips corrected, the low back tends to ease up and vice versa. So we'll, how about feet, feet issues? Anyone want to work on the feet? Yeah, okay. So we'll get all those areas. Good to know what your focus is. Looks like it's kind of across the board. Thanks for those of you turning on your camera. I understand if your computer doesn't have one, but if you do have one, please turn that camera on for me. And um, if it's facing toward the ceiling and I can't see you, that doesn't really help me. <laughs> I need to be able to see your physical body and your movements. So I can uh, correct my cueing if I see that I'm not communicating myself properly or that um, you're moving in a way that is harmful for you. I can correct my cueing. All right, first thing we are all going to do is get settled in. Sometimes in life, we get pulled into commotion. We're in the middle of it, whether it's our own commotion or it's someone, our families or friends, people that we know, right? And what we need is this ability to calm ourselves in situations where we feel like we're sort of stuck in a turmoil there. And by grounding ourselves, what we're going to do is Feel our feet on the ground, feel your toes on the floor, maybe feel like you're connecting in with earth and feel like you're stable. We call this seated mountain pose. Mountains are stable at their base and they grow tall up out of the base. And that's what we want to strive for as well. Nice solid foundation. Once we feel grounded, we'll take our shoulders up, back and around. And this is gonna soften our shoulders. This is the area we tend to hold tension when we are stuck in a motion of uh, you know, turmoil around us. Let's loosen ourselves up a bit. And when we're calm and we're loose, that exudes to others. And then they follow your lead and calm as well. So it's kind of like if someone's shouting and you start whispering and then they lower their voice, sort of that. If you kind of calm your own energy, then others around you will calm as well. Notice I don't have my microphone plugged in, so there we go. Now you can actually hear me. <laughs> Up, back and down one more time. And then let's sit all the way back in our chair, place our hands on our lap, maybe even closing your eyes. That helps me find a deeper sense of relaxation, or maybe even just look down at the floor. And when you take your inhale in through the nose, maybe let those nostrils flare a little bit. And then we'll sigh our breath out of our mouth. And we'll do that a few times, taking that big, beautiful breath. Exhale and tell yourself, I'm letting go. Good, another breath in. And exhale, letting go. Now, letting go can be a physical thing. Maybe you're trying to let go of tension in your neck and your shoulders. Maybe what you're letting go is more emotional, feelings of worry or fear or overwhelm, distraction. So this is the way of calming ourselves and also calming our inner self voice. We can have very worrisome, negative thoughts, and we want to sort of switch the dial on that and catch that negative thought, switch it to a more positive one, and then just feel your energy shift, right? Feel like you're encased in this beautiful bubble. You're in charge of the energy you put out, right? Negative, positive, or, and also what comes in, right? We get to choose who we spend time around. 
what we listen to, what we read, what we see on movies and TV. We are in control of all of that, what comes in and what goes out. So if we can calm ourselves on the inside, we feel much better. There's less dis-ease in our bodies, calming the central nervous system. Good. Feel the energy around us begin to shift now. And as we sit quietly, we don't come to a place of no thoughts. We have a thinking mind. But the purpose of meditation and calming ourselves is to have a thought, acknowledge it, let it pass, and then there's a little gap, another thought comes, and we let that pause. So our, our thoughts aren't ruminating. We're not chasing down the rabbit hole of one thought to the other. We're just peacefully thinking and calming. And we'll take that big breath and the belly expanding as the diaphragm lowers, and then draw the belly in and up on the exhale. And the next breath in will take us Tall, we'll grow long in our spine, lengthen nice and long. Just got a little bit taller and then we'll lower our chin and tuck it to the chest. And that will lengthen the back of the neck. In the back of the neck, it's very tight and compressed. And sometimes when we jut our head forward, the neck muscles tighten. So this stretches out wonderfully, the back of the neck muscles that are so tight. And now we'll begin to roll our right ear over the shoulder. You can have your eyes open or closed as you swoop down and take the left ear over. Taking this gentle half circle side to side in your own gentle arc. So we all have our unique range of motion, the mobility in the neck and shoulders improves once we open up and release the tightness and break up adhesions. So move gently side to side. And now we're going to come to center and take our right ear over the shoulder. Let's hold on to the bottom of the chair with our left hand and take a little lean to the right. And we just want to lean enough to where your left shoulder is lowering away from the ear. And then if you may stay here, stretching the neck and shoulder connection a bit. Or if you like more, turn your chin toward that right armpit. If it feels okay, take a couple of gentle nodding motions, saying yes slowly, and lowering the levator scapula down, lowering the shoulder blade down, moving it away from the neck so that the neck can be long. Good. And we can really stretch a little bit more here. Take the ear back over the shoulder and come back through neutral. Lower your chin back to your chest and go to the other side. Roll the left ear over the shoulder. Right hand hangs down and we'll take that little lean off to the left, just enough to feel that shoulder lower a bit. And then if we want more, we'll turn the chin toward the shoulder. We'll feel that little tug, the little pull there. And you can stay just like this. Eyes open or closed, you have the option of nodding here. It's a really big stretch for the levator scapula. That's a muscle that's situated in the back side of the neck. Levator means to elevate and scapula is your shoulder blade. So we're stretching the muscle that lifts the shoulder blade. Good. And then take your left ear over the shoulder. Go ahead and let your chin come back to the chest again. Interlace your hands behind your head, tucking the chin down, roll your shoulders forward and start drawing your elbows in. And then we'll inhale and lift up and back bend. Maybe lift the chin up and look up. And then we'll exhale and roll that back in, tucking in, elbows in, draw the low belly in and up here, round your back a little, and then inhale a nice strong arch, strengthening those back muscles. And then we exhale and roll in. Good. <clears throat> inhale, stretch it all the way up. Let's come back through neutral and roll those shoulders uh, back and around. So everybody feels, hopefully, a nice energy shift, feeling a little bit softer, a little bit calmer. Nice. Now we're going to do some nice shoulder mobility movement next. So we'll stay in our seated mountain position. 
taking our left hand to our shoulder. We're going to pull that left elbow like a little chicken wing, about 45 degrees, but pull that back until you feel the stretch in front of your shoulder. And then we're gonna crisscross over to stretch the back, but we're not gonna to touch the knee. Just take that elbow across so you feel a stretch along your shoulder blade and lift the elbow up toward the ceiling back there about 45 degrees and turn and look back. And then exhale again and twist it a little bit, round your back and inhale, lift it all the way up there and look at the elbow. And one more time, we'll take it all the way across, tuck it, stretch it, and then inhale, lift it up and hold here. And you can look at your elbow, but if it's okay with your shoulder, maybe pull that whole arm back and look up at your thumb. Feel that stretch, good job, and release it all the way down, shake it out a little bit, tap your feet, and notice the difference of your left shoulder and your right. <laughs> Might feel like it's hanging a little lower. So let's equal that out by taking our right hand to the shoulder. We're gonna pull that arm back, look at the elbow, and then again, we crisscross, tuck and round, stretching that upper back. That's your thoracic spine. And then inhale, lift it up and look. And exhale again, we're gonna round, and stretch it out. Good, and again, take it up one last time. Exhale, round, stretch, breathe. Good, now while we take it up with that elbow, you can stay here looking at the elbow or possibly pull the whole arm back and take a peek at the thumb. Notice where you feel that in your inner arm. Good, and then release it all the way down and roll it out, good, and shake it out and stomp your feet again. And hopefully you're feeling like those shoulders are really releasing out of the ears, out into their sockets. He does. So we talk a lot about patternings in our chair yoga class. We are able to do a lot of different patterning that we don't normally do. So beneficial for our brain. So the number one that I like to do is hands up and we have all of our fingers together and we're going to try to separate the ring and the middle fingers. <laughs> so that's our Star Trek salute. If you can't do this one, this is your homework. If you can physically take your fingers and separate those two fingers, you are capable, the body's capable of doing this. The question is, is your brain sending the message to the hand, right, to do that? So the whole point of it is the brain telling the body what to do. It sends neuropathways. All right, so let's see if we can close and open those fingers a couple of times. See how we do with that. Uh, can be a real challenge. Maybe one hand's a little better than the other. All right, so let's go ahead and open that up. That's your Star Trek hand. Now we're going to see if we can map this into our feet. So we're going to sit all the way out and we're going to take up one foot. Now spread your toes, spread your big toe from your pinky toe. The goal is to see a little space in between each toe. Some of us can do this quite easily. For others, it's a real challenge. Is it because our toes are piled up? That's why they're not spreading? Well, not necessarily. It's mainly because your brain is not sending that neural pathway to your toes to open up like this. So let's try it on the other foot. The more we practice this, the better you'll get. So just keep spreading those toes, right? Now, if you can take both feet up, if you can put the second toe and touch the big toe and kind of start to do a little Star Trek toe, <laughs> you get an A++. But here's the thing, if you can take your fingers and separate those two toes, you are capable of doing it. It's just, is your body telling your toes to do that, right? That's a real challenge to do that one. The main thing we wanna do is just spread the toes wide. Why? Because this is what our body does when we lose our balance. We just naturally flare the toes. You don't even have to think about it because it broadens your base, right? So balance is much easier. We don't want those toes all piled up on each other. So your homework, if you can't undo your toes, is to keep practicing that at home a little by little. Just kind of open and close those toes like we do our fingers.
All right, let's put those feet down. We'll talk a little bit about what sensory motor amnesia is. So sensory is our ability to sense, motor is movement, and amnesia is I forgot something, right? So the toes, when they can't spread like that, say, I forgot how to spread because the brain is no longer telling me to do that thing. So one of the most common sensory motor amnesia issues we want to avoid is rounded forward posture, shoulders. So if we're sitting like this for the majority of our day, we don't want this body part to forget that they can release back and down in their sockets. It's causing a lot of issues in our internal organs, in our breathing, in our musculature, in our spinal alignment not good at all. And you can sit there for a little bit like this, but we don't want to be there all day. So one of the things we can do, if you find yourself at computer, technology really pulls us forward. So one thing we want to do is sit up and broaden. So I want you to do that. Imagine you're at the keyboard or driving or knitting, and now sit up, just take your hands to your shoulders and broaden them. That's what we want width. We want a long collarbone here, just broaden them. The shoulder blades will go back and down right where they're supposed to be. Okay, now remember the Scarlet O'Hara, it's part of our Happy Together dance. This one is um, going to hike the shoulder up, create a little tension and release it. So we're going to take our left hand, like Scarlett O'Hara with her vapors, to the back of our, or the back of the hand on our forehead. Now scrunch that shoulder up a little bit, and then there's the letting go, right? So let's do it again. Hand to the forehead, shoulder up by your ear, and drop it and let it go. Oh, she's got the vapors. One more time. Left hand to the forehead, scrunch it up, and then let it go and shake it out a bit. All right, it does lower the shoulder down. I know it's silly, but it works. So back of your right hand, Oh, Scarlet, scrunch it and then loose it up. Good. And again, I get that shoulder up there and release it. And one more time, lift it up, scrunch it and relax it. Now just ragdoll around. Good. Just loosen things up. Let it go. No right or wrong. Just sway. We want these big organic macro movements. Yeah. So stretch and pull and reach and sway good anything you want to do doesn't have to be what i'm doing just flow in a way that feels good to you all right now our life force reach so take those arms all the way out really reach for the wall on either side of you as far as you can take your fingertips up toward the ceiling Ooh, push those palms away like you could push the wall down. Arms as straight as can be. We're going to look left and lean to the left. Keep that right sit bone rooted on the chair. Let's inhale it back to center and press over to the right. Keep leaning, keep pressing. Good job. Back to center. We're strengthening and lengthening those arm muscles. So push through that left palm. Come back through center. Feel that in your side body. Good. Now back to center. We're going to place the palms facing the floor, facing the feeling, ceiling. Look up, palms touch, and then let's exhale those hands back to the heart. Good job. Now, how many of you have carpal tunnel issues right here in the wrists? Anybody struggling with that? Okay, some a little bit. Well, you may not know if you do. There's a little test for that. So we're going to have our hands to namaste. Now, the way we wanna test this is take our backs of the hands together. So our hands are a book. We're gonna open up and get the whole back of the hand touching and your fingertips face the floor. Okay, so your fingertips are pointing the lap. Now you kind of got that 90 degree angle and we're gonna hold this about 30 seconds or so. And there's a slight pushing of the backs of the hands together. Notice whether you feel tingling sensation, a pinching nerve sensation. This could be a part of um, a start of carpal tunnel issues. So it's just good to check first to see if you have the mobility to do this. And then when you're here, what sensations do you feel? You may not feel anything at all other than the stretch, and that's a good sign. 
Now, the other range of motion we want is to take our prayer hands, so the palms face up, a little push there. We don't have to go overboard with that, but just how does the wrist feel, this hollow area here in the wrist, when you have your hands in prayer? Good. It's just good to check to see, again, if you've got the mobility and what the sensation is. Good. Hold there. And just see how you're feeling. And how does this position feel versus the first position? One's probably going to feel a little more comfortable than the other. We're going to try it again. So open your book, backs of the hands together, fingers pointing down towards your lap. And you don't have to press real hard, but it's just a little effort. One hand pressing against the back of the other. These two movements are very good to stretch the carpal tunnel area. Good. We don't really think about stretching our wrists very much, but think about all of the movement, the muscle strength for your hand comes out of your wrist. So those wrists get used. Now let's take it to the other side. So we've got the palms pressing again. We're just checking again here to see how we feel. If you've got some big pinching nervy sensation, you might check in with your doctor just to make sure that carpal tunnel area is okay. All right. Now we're going to do a little bit more for bone density. So keep your hands here, but press them really strongly one against the other. Feel like it's a tug of war. Really press, press, press. Now elbows lift up, shoulders back and down. Press your forearms, which are parallel to the floor, off to the right. And let's turn our head left. Hold there. Just keep pushing and then come back to center and take your elbows to your left that look right. Keep pushing your hands together and then come back to center. And with the palms just as they are, but spread your fingers, we're gonna twirl those fingers down toward the floor and tuck our chin. So now you're looking at the carpal tunnel area. Keep those fingers spread wide, twirl them up and in towards your heart interlace and then we'll push that out and take it overhead. Good. Now we want to scoot forward because we're going to be placing our hands at our back. So you need space for your arms. So let's take those hands right where the heel of the hand is at your lowest rib, right at your kidney area and your fingertips pointing down and open and close your little chicken wings here. So we're squeezing those shoulder blades together. I love this one. It stretches those tighter pec minor muscles right here that pull us forward and tones up the weaker back muscles. So those of you with um, mid back issues, this one helps. Good, open and close, no grimacing. If there's any pain, you can move your hands or make it smaller or skip it. All right, now let's take those hands and open and close. They're in that prayer position for quite a while. So right out there in front of you, open and close and then twirl your fingers and your wrists, circle all that around. You've got it, keep it flowing. <clears throat> Go around the other way. Oh, good work and a good shake out. Get all the tension flying off the fingertips. Make a blur. This is good for us for those wrists and forearms and hands. Ah, okay. Now we're going to pay attention to our spines. We've been working up in the neck and shoulders. So let's take our legs out nice and wide with our hands on our lap around our knees. We're going to inhale, pull our hands to our hips, take a back arch, lift the chin, look up, and then exhale, slide your hands and round over your kneecaps. Good. Tuck your chin and let's go the other way. So inhale, arch it, looking up, squeeze shoulder blades together, and then exhale, round your back. And we're going to do this a couple more times. So in inhale, arching, strengthening the back when we pull those shoulder blades toward each other. And then we exhale, round the upper back and stretch it. And then inhale up and exhale round again. Good. Now we're going to sit up nice and tall and straight. Keep the legs where they are, but the left hand's not at the knee, but the thigh bone, that femur bone, 
cross your left shoulder towards your right knee. Let's have a peek at the toes. You can push your hand into that thigh bone and notice the stretch around your left hip and the lower rib. So it's that QL muscle, the quadratus lumborum. Now let's take the left arm and reach all the way across and open and close your fist a couple of times. And we'll just keep reaching and stretching and breathing. We have low back issues. Those of you who held your hand up for low back, this is a super good one for the lower back. Good. Now let's take both hands back to the lap and sit through center. And the right hand situates on the thigh, right shoulder reaches toward the left knee. Just peek at your toes, notice sensation between your lower rib and hip. Breathe into that tightness, open those ribs. And then when we're ready, that right arm reaches out and open and close your fingers, really spread them wide. Good job, and then pull them in nice and tight. Good, now let's come back through center and we're gonna reach that left hand across the body. Imagine you picked an apple, bring it into your shoulder and drop it in a basket behind you. And again, reach it, pull it in and drop it. Now right hand does the same thing. Reach across, pull that apple in and twist behind you in the basket and reach and pull and drop. Good, let's take those knees out in front of us and we're gonna hug the right knee in. So let's bring that knee up to the chest. So, uh, a really good idea to do this before you get out of bed in the morning. The idea is to stretch the back. It makes us feel so much better. Now let's come to the left side and try to take the knee to the nose as best you can. Oh, good. Really stretch like this first thing in the morning. It gives us the pliability for the rest of the day we need in our back. Nice. Now release your foot. So there's a lot of articles about brain health. I'm so interested in this. My grandmother did not have Alzheimer's, but she did have a great deal of dementia. I think she passed at about age 82. And then my father passed at 79 and he was not too bad. He was just kind of repeating the same stories over and over. So I, I, we figured he was kind of losing his memory as well. Never had a great memory, just kind of a learning disability. So it worries me some. So I try to do a lot of things to help my own memory. And I like to share it with others that are interested in that as well. Just keeping our brains sharp. And, you know, we have neuroplasticity in our brains. We are never too old to learn something. Yes, it's more challenging than when we're younger, like learning a language. But those of you who are taking the Italian classes, for example, that is such great brain work. So keep up with that. Learning a whole new language really fires up the brain. So good for you. And if you haven't explored those classes, maybe give that a try. It's really, really great for us to keep learning new things. What we can do in yoga is move in patterns. Move in patterns helps us ward off dementia. Our brain is not a muscle. Sometimes it's referred to it as, as an organ. We do have muscles that feed blood to the brain, but exercise in general is so great for the brain. If you're patterning, even better. So we'll take our arms up and overhead. We'll take this piece by piece. Let's find our cactus and start our patterns. Left hand touches the right shoulder and then back to center. Why this is helpful is because the right hand crosses the midline of the body and then it goes back to its place. Now we're gonna add in even more. So we're gonna cross the left hand to the right shoulder, but we'll look to the left and then inhale center. Cross your right hand to the left shoulder and then look right. Good. So each time we cross the midline, the brain fires up a little bit. Let's take this left hand and crisscross it over to the right knee. When we tap one side, the right side over to the left, tap that body part, you are engaging the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And that's a good thing. So left hand touches the right knee and then look left. Good. Inhale center. Take it over, crisscross, and look to the right. 
All right, let's go back through center, just shake that out. So good job, we've got the patterning, we take the opposite hand to the other body part and we look in the direction away from the where the hand is touching, right? So swing those arms out, we're gonna do it again. We're just keeping the pattern going and we're gonna add on this time. So here we go, take those arms overhead. We'll start with that head turn right away. Left hand touches the right shoulder, look left. Inhale center, right hand touches the left shoulder, look right. Inhale center. Now we'll take the left hand to the right knee, look left, back to center. Right hand to the left knee, look right. Now the adding on is we're gonna pick up that right knee, tap it with the left hand, look left. Inhale center. Right hand goes to the lifted left knee, look right. Oh, good job. Shake it out. There's so much brain power with that one. The brain has got to tell the body what to do. The question is, is the body listening, right? Let's go ahead and get our water. But each time we do that, make those patterns, the brain gets very sharp. So we do a lot of those patternings. All right, let's take this to the lower body now. Some of you were wanting to work through the feet. So we'll sit all the way back, bring those feet up and we're gonna point and flex. So we're basically working through the ankles. We will be standing later and work through the whole foot up into the toes, the arches of the feet. So I don't know that we're quite over the hot, humid days yet. You know, we're not, I don't think, fully in the fall. I might be wrong. But if we have some more hot, humid days, what we want to do is move our legs like this. It helps get the circulation flowing. If you tend to get dark spots, purple, red uh, splotches on your legs, this is going to move that out and return your skin back to its natural color. Good. And then we can circle it around. Any movement like this to improve circulation is what we want. Keep those feet moving throughout the day, especially if you drive or if you take an airplane ride. We want to make sure we're moving through those feet. Take it both directions. Circle it around. Alternate pointing and flexing. And you can also take your feet in a big capital U shape. Just sway them side to side, roll those ankles around. All right, now let's flex the feet. If you've got socks on, that's fine. Just spread your toes as wide as you can. Keep practicing that. Send the message from your brain to your toes. Good job. Let's stomp that out a little bit. That helps our circulation as well. And we'll take our hip glides. So we'll go ahead and take our legs out and pivot to where our left thigh only is on the chair. Now your right knee can be facing the floor. If that's too much for you, you can bring it in. But we basically want to have just that left thigh on the chair, right knee facing the floor. You can tuck your toes or be on the top of the foot. All right. Now we're going to take a uh, left hand, hold on to the chair, right hand to the shoulder. Everybody has that right elbow pointing out, good. Now the right elbow dips down toward the right hip. Move your right hip up to meet your elbow. There's that little contraction, it's a little awkward. Then we lift the elbow up and lower the hip. Lean toward the back of the chair, good. And we'll do that again. So dip down, the hip lifts, and then the elbow lifts up and the hip lowers, lean. Excellent, keep flowing that. We're getting into those strong muscles by contracting them and then we lengthen them. So those side waist muscles are, are, are obliques, right? But this also really helps your low back. Nice, helps the SI joint. Dip, now hold it here. We're gonna lift that right elbow up or leaning back. You can take your right fingertips to the ceiling or maybe bring your bicep a little closer to your cheek and lean over the back of the chair. Take some deep breaths here. Good job. And let's take our time slowly coming back through center. Take your time setting this up on the other side. So we'll take our right thigh on the chair and the left foot back as far as you comfortably can. 
Just take your right knee straight ahead, your right hand holds on and the left elbow is uh, straight out. Now go ahead and lower the elbow, lift the hip up, lower the hip and lift the elbow. Lean toward the back of your chair there, good. Inhale, contract, use your breath. Exhale, get long and lengthen. Inhale, contract. Exhale, long and lengthen. Good job. One more time. We're going to tap that hip and then we're going to hold here with the elbow up or the fingers up or lean more toward the back of your chair. Feel that stretch from your fingertips to your shoulder all the way to your knee. Good job. Now let's release that. Come back through center. Walk our feet back into mountain position. And we're gonna hug our knee into the chest again. This is gonna stretch our low back and bring it back to neutral after those side bends. Good, let's relax and go to the other side. Oh, this one every day, cat cows and knee to nose every day, those of you with back issues. Okie doke. Now the next one we wanna do is, it's more patterning, but it also helps us with our spines. So kind of think about your disc of your spine, like little dominoes all stacked up. And we want a little space between each one. We don't want them rubbing and impinging on nerves, right? So sit nice and tall. You do have some curves of your spine, your neck curves in, the thoracic spine curves out a little bit and the low back curves in. So we have those nice natural curves. We'll keep those and arms beside of us. Root those sit bones, think about a string pulling you up nice and tall. That's called axial extension. What will help us strengthen our spine is lift that left arm. Try to keep it in its socket. When that arm lifts for the ceiling, those spinal muscles get nice and strong. And then we'll release this left arm and take the right arm with the palm in and the thumb up. Good job. Let's release that arm and take out the right leg. So we'll flex that foot, keep it nice and straight, work the quad. Good job. And then the left leg is going to go out there, really press to the heel. And we'll put together the right leg and the left arm. Yeah, everybody got that. Opposites. And the right arm and the left leg. So now we have both hemispheres of the brain working again. The goal is to not round your back. So we wanna keep that stack of dominoes. Visualize that really tall, that string still pulling the crown of your head to the ceiling. Oh, this is some good core work right here. Oh, we're gonna make it even more core. So let's go ahead and release the arm and leg, but take both arms up at the same time. There's that core working to lift your arms, not just the shoulders. Let's lower and hold on to the chair, scoot back and take both legs up with our toes up. Good, now both arms up, both legs up. Good job, and then crisscross those legs. Take your arms out and we can crisscross the arms too. Oh, there we go. That's a big core work right here. Super duper core, crisscross those arms and legs. Good job, three, two, and one. Excellent, take that all out and some more water. Beautiful work. We're gonna do some things for the hand now. This next one's called the knuckle roll down really helpful for hand arthritis. Any of you bowlers? Not too many? Okay. Uh, knitters, crocheters, things, card players. Okay. Anything where you use your hands, um, that's good because we keep those hands moving. Sometimes we can get repetitive um, injuries in here. We get a little arthritis and it makes the fun hobbies we do painful. So this one's going to really help ease some of that up. And you can do this on your own anytime. But let's take our left hand, left hand, spread your fingers wide, open and close like we were trying to do with our toes earlier, right? Open and close. Now turn your palm in, but keep that open and close. 
and then close all your fingers and see if you can open up a Star Trek salute the middle and ring fingers open close them back up now if you peek at your hand you see those little creases that's where your knuckle joint is we're going to roll down that top knuckle group middle and then when we get the all the fingers in there we'll take the thumb tuck it under the fingers and a little tight squeeze there and that might be a little painful on that thumb but we want to strengthen there and open nice and wide and open and close again good job and we're going to repeat that. So close the fingers, Star Trek in out a couple of times. All of this is strengthening. It works our brain. And then close the fingers. And again, roll down all the way through. Little knuckle group by knuckle group. And when you come into that fist, we're going to tuck the thumb under. It's that bottom knuckle there. We want nice and strong. Good job. And then open it wide. Good. Now let's go to the other side. So right hand wide and open and close a few times, moving those hands together. And then all the fingers together and Star Trek salute a couple times if you can. And then close the fingers and we're going to roll down those knuckles segment by segment. Everything coming in super tight. Might be a little painful. Do your best. Tuck that thumb under and take a nice tight fist here. Good, breathe, little squeeze. Good, and then open and close again. One last time. <clears throat> Let's make those Star Trek salutes. <laughs> and then here we go. Everything together, roll it in slowly. Tight, tight, tight. Get that thumb in there, a tight little squeeze, super tight. Spread the fingers wide and open and close. Everything open and close. Good. We just got to keep those hands moving. You can make a fist if you like. Shake those hands out. Good. Ooh, to the side. Give it a shake. Frown in front. To the other side. All right. Circle it around. Nice. Now, I like to do some nice work for the neck, shoulders, and the low back. So we'll start out with just taking those arms up. Nice, tall spine. Reach it up there. Now close your hands, and we're just going to sway a little bit side to side. So we want to work those muscles in the back. Yeah, feel those back muscles as you sway side to side like that. And let's sail it back up to the top again. Ooh, keep those prayer hands. Good job. And we're going to open that back up and take a cactus arm and we'll release the right hand. Left arm is going to crisscross, but keep your eye on that thumb. And as it touches your shoulder, let's touch the chin. And then we'll inhale, look at that arm, go back to cactus. And here we are again, crisscrossing the midline of the body. So the brain gets all excited. Good. And then back to cactus. We'll take that right, left hand down, crisscross, crisscross the right arm to the shoulder. Tuck your chin as if you could tuck and touch your chin to your thumb. Inhale, look. Good. And then exhale, we're going to tuck it again. Nice. Now we're going to come back through center, legs a little bit wider. We're going to reach that left arm over again, crossing the body. Bring it back in, tuck it behind you. Reach, grab that apple, pull it to your shoulder, turn. Now right arm reaches. We pull it in and we drop it one more time. Reach, pull it in and drop. Now the left arm is going to circle, big wide circle all the way around, stretching our back and our shoulders. Good job. Excellent. All right. That feels so good. But let's bring those knees back through center. Ah, oh, big breath in. Now, a really silly little thing. This is patterning, and we're going to give this one a try. So we're going to bring our index fingers and our thumbs together. So we have the A-OK, -okay, right? Or we're going to make glasses out of those. We're going to put those right up to our eyes. <laughs> good. Now we're going to get a little fancier here. This is good for thumb arthritis. We are going to see if we can flip this upside down. So you're going to take the palm of your hand 
to your face. So the finger pads come to your jawline. See if you can get that circle around your eyes, making a Mardi Gras wrap mask right there, right? <laughs> That's a challenge, isn't it? So open your hands, see if you can touch your index finger to your thumb. And there's those glasses. That's the easier one. Now the more challenging one, wrists, fingers, and shoulders. We're going to take those fingers to the jaw. Good. And flip it up. Oh, my goodness. And then we'll release that. <laughs> nice job. That's just a fun little party trick to try, right? We're at a party, things get boring. <laughs> you know what to do to liven the group up. All right. We just got to try keeping it up with new things. Okay. Let's get those heart rates up. So we want to use our upper body mostly here in our sun salutations. Lower body is very grounded. So we don't want to get sloppy with our feet. We want to make sure the feet are not in a placement where we have our pigeon toes, right? Or one foot's in front of the other or tucked. We want to stabilize our body. So have those feet directly under your ankles and turn straight ahead as much as you can. And then from here, a big circle up and overhead. We'll take those cactus arms. We're tall and straight. Inhale, exhale. We're going to lean forward, but take your elbows back a bit. Take another breath. Exhale your hands to the kneecaps and slide toward the floor. You don't need to touch the floor. And then inhale, come back up and arch and lift your chin. Exhale, fold again. And just the right arm reaches up with the elbows straight and look up. Exhale to release it. Inhale, left arm up and then release. And now belly button in, power yourself back up in that big sun circle. And then exhale your hands to the heart. Just keep it going. Inhale, reach up, look up if it's comfortable. And then exhale the cactus arm and then come halfway down. Keep those elbows back and take a breath. Hands to your kneecaps and slide down. Inhale up and open the heart. Open up here. Exhale and fold, bowing down again. Inhale, left arm up and open your fingers. Release it, right arm up and exhale down. Inhale, big scoop takes us all the way back up. Exhale, hands to the heart and here we go. Inhale to touch. Exhale to cactus, lean about halfway, take a big breath. Hands to your kneecaps and slide it down. Inhale up halfway and open. Exhale, we're folding. Good. Right arm comes up. Reach up. Look at your thumb. Release it. Left arm reaching up. Lower. Now power you up. Power yourself up again. Low belly in. Exhale, hands to the heart. Now we're going to take this like a big bellows breath. Open up your wings and then touch your palms and elbows and tuck your tail. Inhale, open. Exhale, tuck. Now let's take our arms right here to cactus. Inhale. Exhale, we're going to turn left. Inhale, center. Turn right. Good job. Now again, let's go ahead and exhale, round that. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Now this time, we're going to hold on to our elbows. Inhale, exhale, lean left. Good. Inhale. Exhale. Lean right. Nice job. Now take your hands to your heart. And this time we're going to come up and overhead. Index fingers touching. Pull through cactus all the way. Elbows to the rib cage. Good. Palms out in front of you. We're going to exhale. Turn left. Inhale. Center. Turn right. Good job. Now open those arms out to the side. Take your elbows out a little bit and pull back. Oh, there's that big stretch. Bring them out in front of you. Flip your palms down. Exhale, forward fold. Now we're going to come all the way up with our arms and we're going to lean. So leaning halfway, that's your strong back. Biggest breath here. So arms out in front of you, parallel to the floor. Palms face each other. Lean forward. We have to engage the core for muscles to do that, right? Now, the more you lean, the more the work it is. And then toes down, heels lift up. Good. Now, lower your heels, hands up, palms touch, and exhale your hands to your heart. Now, take the arms up again. Touch those index fingers. 
And then let's see if we can plug the elbows all the way to the ribs or get as close as you can. It's a good shoulder plug. Arms out in front of us. We're gonna crisscross one hand on top, open and come all the way up. So fingertips turn in toward each other, not spilling our tea. We're gonna bring the arms back to center, turn your hands towards you and extend back again. Good, so we're kind of back in that carpal tunnel area, the wrist, the shoulders, the elbows. Take that spiral back and around. Good, back behind you. Excellent job, out in front. One more time, open your hands, take your elbows out and pull that back. Oh, really helps to firm up those back muscles. Pull it in, bring it back in front of you, flip it down, exhale, forward fold. Nice, come on up, we're gonna lean forward. So arms out in front of us. What does that lean do? It strengthens our core muscles, heels down, toes up. Work on spreading those toes, Star Trek toes. Can your second toe touch your big toe? <laughs> Lower your toes, arms overhead. Exhale your hands to your heart. Last one like the first one, arms up and overhead. Cactus lean, deep breath. Hands to your knees, forward fold. Good, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold again. Let's take that right arm up. Release it, left arm up and release. Now let's come back to a seated position. Arms out in front of us. We're gonna come up to a standing position. So all the way up, good job. Use the back of your chair here. And we're gonna take a little walk around our chair. So make sure around the perimeter of your chair, there's nothing you can step on that will harm you. First, we want to come up to the high part of our, have the high part of your chair in front of you. Come up to the balls of the feet. Good. And then release to your heels. Come up to your toe ball mound and your heels. This is good for the feet. Now, the next time you come up to the tippy toes, right arm comes to cactus. Stay on your tippy toes. Left hand holds on and we're going to walk around the perimeter of our chair. Holding on, tippy toe walk, till you come back to facing the high part of your chair, lower your heels down. Now pick your toes up so you're on your heels. Left arm to cactus, we're gonna walk around the chair, straightening our feet like little penguins. <laughs> Hold on, here we go, all the way back around. Good job. Now we're back, mountain pose, bend our right knee. We're gonna circle it toward the chair. Keep our hips lubricated and healthy. It's like putting WD-40 in your hip. <laughs> Go the other way. Getting into that hip mobility, very important. Nice. Now lift and lower that right knee, just out to the side. Good work. Now, the next time your leg is out there, straighten your leg, step that right foot behind the left, press the whole heel down, peek over your left shoulder, and maybe draw that right arm back behind you, a big stretch and helps us balance. Good. Now let's face the chair, bend our left knee, circle toward the chair. Good job. Go backwards, circle the other way. Good job. We really want to move these legs around and round and now lift and lower. This uh, fluid, this snowy fluid is only released when we move like this. Good. Now go ahead and straighten that left leg all the way out. Step it behind you, go all the way down to your heel. Look over your right shoulder, but pull that left arm back. Good, stretch the whole body out, balance. Now let's come back and ski that out a little bit. Good work. Now, I want you to stand behind your chair, place your right hand right at your right hip crease, lift that right knee. Do you feel that muscle? That's your hip flexor. That in your quadricep helps you go up and down the stairs. So we are going to do some movements to strengthen our quads and our hip flexor. They're muscles of independence. So hang on to your chair, bend your knees. You're gonna sit in on imaginary stool. 
Take your right arm in front. If you feel comfortable, left arm comes too. Good job. Now, right arm only, take it to cactus. Take it back out in front of you. Left arm to cactus. Now, take it in front, both arms out to airplane wing to the side. Both arms to cactus. Elbows press together with those palms. Back to cactus. Airplane, arms out in front of you and come to stand. Oh, good job. Shake out your legs. If you're able to grab your ankle, if you need to put a strap around your shin and you can hold on or just bend your knee. If this is at all painful for your knee, you can skip it. You just wanna stretch that muscle we just strengthened. Good job. And then the other side. Left knee coming in, good work. Press your hip toward the chair a little bit. You can always strap around there if you need to. All right, now standing at the chair, right foot forward, left foot steps back. Track your right knee, second and third toe. Right arm to cactus and left arm that strengthens our back. Now breathe here, both arms lift and lower. See if we can get those elbows down. So arms reach, shoulders down the back. Good, one more time, lift and lower. Now both hands to the chair, step that right foot back. Good job. Now we're gonna do a little differently. This time, both arms to cactus, and we're gonna touch those elbows again and forearms and inhale up. Good job, exhale, round and touch and inhale up one more time, round it. Good job, come on up, shake that out and have a seat in your chair. Beautiful work, everybody. All right, from here, just straighten your right leg out. We're gonna finish up just a, a quick stretch for the hamstrings and the hip and we'll call it a day. Good job. Let's come on up and you can place that same ankle in front of the other foot or right at your thigh and hinge forward. Ooh, that's deep in that hip and the piriformis in the glutes. Good job. Let's take it to the other side. So left leg out in front of us because we're hinging forward, flexing that left foot. Spine is long. Try not to tuck your chin here. Good job, coming on up. Last little bit here, either ankle to ankle or ankle to thigh, hinging forward. Slow your breath down. Stretching is so healthy for us and it really is all about calming the central nervous system. So more important than how far you can fold over is slowing down your breath. And that sends the muscle group a message, it's time to relax a little bit. Good job. Let's come back through center, leg down. Let's just notice how we're feeling in our shoulders, our feet, our hips, our hands. We worked it all today. So let's take those arms overhead and pull in gratitude for these healthy, strong bodies of ours. Thank you so much for joining. Be well. Take good care of yourselves this weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Have a great day. <clears throat>